Hello and welcome to the garden. So today I'm going to take a look at the grapevines here and I think sort of from mid-December onwards this is a pretty good time to get some pruning done. So the vines are probably the easiest of all the fruiting crops to manage at least when they're trained this way and, and most greenhouse grapes are, are done in a similar way this is the so-called rod and spur method and it doesn't get much easier than this so these have been grown with a, a t-shaped main stem so this is the rod and this is a permanent part of the vine and then from each one of these each year a new stem grows from nodes along the, the rod and these are the spurs. So the great thing about the rod and spur approach is that you can pretty much fill any space you like with this method. So it's quite, it, it's quite flexible. You can have a single stem, you can run the stem up to the ridge and along the ridge if you want and the bunches will hang down nicely. You can do something like I've done here with a, a T-shape. If you've got a wall to cover, you can arrange it in tiers, like an espalier. Just leave, I don't know, 18 inches to two feet apart on each tier. And you, you can fill a space with permanent rods. And, and then once that space is filled out, annual pruning is ever so straightforward. So this wood here, these spurs, this is the fruiting wood, this is grown new each year. And so there are three jobs that you can tackle at this time of year. I'll briefly tell you about two of them, but I'm not actually going to do them, mostly because I'm a little bit lazy and they're good things to do potentially, but they're not vital. So only the pruning is vital. Um, this time of year is a pretty good time to look at it. I could do this job early next year, but, but I don't want to push it too far into next year because if you start to prune these as the sap is rising, then there's a chance you'll have excessive bleeding from this wood. This wood, because it's, it's old, it will take quite a long time to heal and, and cutting this as the sap rises, that can lead to a lot of bleeding. Now, opinions vary as to whether that bleeding is really that significant. I'm inclined to think it's not that important, but nonetheless, since it's easy to avoid it, I'm gonna do that by pruning them now, well before the sap is thinking about starting its journey. So this wood is old and brown and ripe. And it, one of the most important things to overwinter a vine successfully is to pick a variety for the conditions you have that ripens well. And, and of course, I mean that in two senses. So obviously you want the grapes to ripen. Now I've got two grape vines here. This one is Black Hamburg. In the other greenhouse, I have the Muscat of Alexandria. Black Hamburg is a really reliable and pretty prolific glasshouse grape. And I think this one's probably suitable across much of the country. The Muscat of Alexandria, on the other hand, in some ways, that's a really bad choice. I'm growing it because I really wanted to grow that variety. In a good season, the grapes are fantastic. They have an amazing flavor. They're not bad in an average season, but there are some years where the results are a little bit disappointing, and that's because it really wants extra heat. It wants extra heat in the spring to get it growing early in the year, and it ideally would have extra heat at the end of the year to finish ripening the grapes, which are pretty late, as well as, as, well as finish the, the, the growth cycle of the, the vine as a whole. So that, that one 
still has leaves on it. I'm going to have a look at it in a little bit, see whether the wood is properly ripe, but it may or may not be. The problem with um, unripe wood, so what I mean by that is that if I show you a close-up of this wood here, you might be able to see on the camera there that this is brown, it's rock hard, this just looks like old wood and there's no there's no young fresh looking wood there's no green wood if we go to the end of these stems you can see where i've i've pruned these back earlier in the year but the entire length of this is rock hard stuff so this is properly mature wood and that's what you want to cut back into now grape vines are very often a little bit marginal in the UK and um, there are a great many varieties where the wood can struggle to ripen properly and then there's a chance that as it goes into winter the cold weather is going to cause some damage but this is not going to be a problem here at all this is nice and ripe so you don't really want a variety where in the position you've planted it in and this becomes even more important as you move further north in the country you don't want it to either fail to ripen the crop or where where you've got a lot of tender unripe wood trying to go into winter that is not ideal at all so you've got to pick the right sort of vine for the location with the muscat i knew that that one would be a little bit tricky it's going to be pretty tricky anywhere we've got a more or less ideal situation here i'm in the south of england we're more or less south facing i've got the wall at the back of the greenhouse here so without artificial heating i'm not going to be able to improve on this very much but even with that that muscat grape it, it doesn't ripen the crop particularly well it needs a good autumn because if the weather turns a bit foul then I'm more than likely to lose a lot of that crop with botrytis as I did this year but I grow it anyway because I really want to grow that variety I know it's not the right one for this spot not without some extra warmth but I wouldn't change it for anything that's that's just me being weird um, this old fellow though, the Black Hamburg, this is a, a really sensible proposition. It's a, a great glass house, great. It does benefit from some thinning, thinning of the bunches and then also if you can be bothered with it, thinning of the individual berries makes a huge difference to the, the size and the quality of the grapes that you get. It is a massive faff. One advantage with the muscat grape I've got there is that I don't have to thin the individual berries. I still have to thin a few of the bunches out but the, the bunches are, are fairly well spread so, so they can form really large berries and they are really quite large with that variety without any crowding. So that one's a lot better in that respect but otherwise Black Hamburg is a good reliable fellow. So here is the muscat grape and you can see this is this has still got a lot of leaf on it it is really a long way behind this year so this wood here this is fairly ripe wood it would be okay to cut that but then if you look if you look up here you can see what I mean by unripe wood if I was going to be pruning this stuff that this would be really bad this is soft and sappy and very likely to be damaged during the winter and there's a lot of this sort of secondary growth on this vine and uh, that, that's not ideal this should this should be properly dormant by now but it isn't and I think that's because it had such a slow start in the spring nonetheless I should still be able to prune this reasonably um, because this wood at the base here is nice and ripe. I will probably leave this one actually until until next year. I'll think about it but um, there is a lot of unripe wood here and this 
this is still this is still fairly fairly soft stuff so I don't know I'm not I'm not that happy with this I don't want this shoot anyway I will remove that but um, no this isn't this isn't ideal at all so that's really not what you want to see those leaves should have dropped all of this wood should be nice and ripe now and it isn't that's partly because it's slightly the wrong variety but I think this is the first year it's been in that state at this time of year so we're in the middle of December already and that that vine should have gone to sleep but well there's not a lot I can do about that that is undoubtedly because of the weather during late winter and through the spring it was so cold this year and it's already a bit of a late starter it was miles behind the black hamburg and on the one hand the black hamburg had a little bit of damage from late frost because it's much earlier and the muscat avoided that by coming into flower that much later in the year but it is so behind it was cold to start with the summer was a bit miserable so it never really had a had a chance this season and now i've got a lot of unripe wood i think it'll be fine because um i think where i'm going to be cutting most of that wood is ripe, but um, i'm still not not happy to see it in that state and that's the sort of thing ideally you want to avoid especially if you're growing outdoors that would be really bad because the conditions in the greenhouses here especially with the benefit of the wall they are so much better than outdoors if that vine was outdoors i would think many of those branches would suffer a bit through the winter especially if we get some colder weather later on anyway to the three jobs and i'm only going to do one of those i'm going to prune these uh, spurs here but there are two other things that I was going to mention one is that after you've pruned these you can lay the rods down so I could un undo these um, and lower them undo these all the way back to the the center of the greenhouse where these emerge and let them hang down the end will come and rest on the ground and the idea there is that in the spring as the or, or late winter as the sap starts to rise laying the rods down can help with getting good and even bud break all along the stem i have done that some years but i'm not planning to do it now i've got these tied up with rubbery ties and i, I don't actually want to cut those i want to leave them as they are it's not a big deal it's often recommended but some years I've done it and some years I haven't. To be honest, I've never noticed any problem with bud break at all. But maybe if you had particularly long rods, maybe that would make a difference. The other job is to strip off some of the old bark. So you can see that over time you get this shaggy bark on here. And it's not a problem, but this can be a good place for pests to hide so one job you could do is to strip back all of this old bark it's a nice job to do in the winter that gets rid of hiding places for pests and um, probably the best tool to use for that would be a, a blunt knife certainly you don't want a sharp knife but a blunt knife is quite handy to sort of get under these strands and scrape them away and well that is a good thing to do but it's a bit of a faff it takes quite a long time on on long vines like these i've got 20 foot of horizontal rod there and and about six feet of vertical so i'm really not too keen to do too much of that i have a little bit i have a little bit of a tug from time to time on a few loose bits but going along and, and actually peeling this back as you should yeah i don't i don't do that very often so those are the two jobs i'm not going to do today um all i'm going to do is cut back these lengths of fruiting wood 
Now the muscat grape, that one's a bit of a mess because there's a lot of secondary growth there that for some reason I didn't pinch out. I know I did a couple of rounds of it, but you get so much growth off of these vines and you have to keep going back, pinching out, regrowth. But I did a much better job of that in here. So I've got nice short lengths of rod here and, and that's as it should be. This is where I made my first cut and then I was a lot more careful about pinching out or pruning off the secondary growth. So this fruiting wood grows new every year and very often you, you would cut this back somewhere close to the main stem here and there, there are buds all around the base here and you could cut them back there. I've moved this rod, this, this used to be running along the top of the wall and it wasn't good there because then the grapes would hang down and get in the way of the top of the peach tree. So I've raised this up when I put this um, wire mesh trellis in place. I raised the rod up here and, and I'd like the bunches to come further up the slope of the greenhouse here. So I'm not cutting them hard back to this point. I'm going to leave them a little bit longer and I may leave um, some stubs here. You can see that I left one here last year. Now in theory all I need here is one bud. So I mean there are a couple of buds here and there's one, one in there. You have to be just a little bit careful. It's a good idea to leave more than one bud just so that you've got a couple of spares and also to bear in mind that some of the buds around the base, I mean, you, you, this probably won't show up on the camera, but there's a bud there, it's ever so small. And that is often the case that around the base of these spurs, some of those buds will be a bit small and a bit pathetic. And what we really want is a nice juicy bud so that we get a strong shoot next year. So it is better not to prune too hard necessarily to leave a few spare buds and not to rely on small buds right at the base. But anyway, there, there's a couple of nice buds here. There's also one at the back. So I'm just going to cut that here. Um, similarly with this one, but I think See these buds, these buds here, they could be fine, but they are, they are a bit small. I'm going to cut that at similar length. And, well, that's basically it. I just go along and trim off these old bits of fruiting wood. I've got a nice bud down the bottom. That's probably okay. That's also nice, so I can... I think I cut that one back here. This is rubbish, I don't want that, and that I don't want either, so I'll remove those. This is nonsense, that can go. These areas can become a bit gnarly, and after a while you can get the loppers out or the pruning saw and come back in here and sort of prune out some of the old gnarly stuff. This can become quite big and messy and sometimes it's nice to cut that hard back. But I, I've done this in the past at here and, and I don't think I need to do it right now. So I'm gonna leave that. And there's all these silly little buds here. They will, they will produce shoots next year, but they're, they're not gonna be any good and they will not last because I will rub those ones out straight away. Oh, there's some really nice buds on this shoot here. I'm going to leave this length because this is moving the grapes a little bit further up this up this roof section here and, and that's what I want to do. I like these buds. I will cut that back here.
So that's it. Nothing more to do with these now until the young shoots start to emerge next year. And when they're, when they're just a few inches long, I will come through and rub off any that I don't want. So I only really need one, maybe two at each node here. The nodes on this one are fairly close together. I think on the muscat they're a little bit further apart. That all depends on, um, probably on the variety, but, but also on how it was growing at the time. So if there's rapid growth, those nodes tend to be a little bit further apart and, and that's maybe not ideal, but a foot apart is perfect. These are a little bit close together, so that means I can rub off the majority of new shoots next year. Some of these positions, I've had two shoots this year, where actually, I suppose strictly speaking, I should probably only have the one. But those are decisions that I will make next spring or, or late winter. As soon as, the, as soon as the shoots start to show up, it all depends on the weather conditions. If we get a warm spell, and uh, this is quite early to start to shoot, then that can happen quite early in the season. But yeah, that is it for this vine. I think I will leave the muscat for another couple of weeks. Well, I'll probably do it, uh, probably do it mid-January now looking at it. But I don't want to leave it much later than that. And yeah, that one is not so good, but hopefully next year we might have a better season for it. And well, we did have some good grapes off of it, but they weren't exceptional this year. And we did lose quite a few of them to Botrytis. They really struggled to ripen. And because of that, we left them on there for a long time. Because who wants to eat sour, nasty grapes? And that, of course, left them prone to the Botrytis. And they, we had some wet spells in in the autumn, and we had quite a bit of botrytis in that greenhouse, so that was a pity, but hopefully next season, it'll be a little bit better for that variety. But this one, if you're looking for a greenhouse grape, this one works very well. Of course, both of these are seeded. The seedless grapes tend to need warmer conditions than the, the seeded sorts that have been grown here for a long time, so they can be a bit more tricky. Uh, but I think you also get better flavour from those grapes, so yeah. Anyway, that is it for this video. Thanks ever so much for watching and bye for now. <laughs>